home. That's a victory shout. That's a shout that we made it. I did it, and God has provided. The wall came tumbling down. The Bible said they walked on up into the city. See that? You ain't gonna do it by yourself. Amen. You need the Lord's help to do what you're trying to do. Amen. Ain't no sense in you hiding behind no rock or in no cave. Come on out and get what you need from the Lord. Amen. He's already come to you once yes. when he came to this earth. Bled, was buried, rose again, gave his own life just for you. Yes. And now you want him to come find you again? It's time for you to come to him. Amen. He gave you a word saying, come unto me. Yeah. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, yeah. I will give you rest. What is the what is the, the solution to me getting rest? Coming unto him. You gotta come to him. If you're ever going to get beyond where you are, you've got to come to him. If you want things to get better, you've got to come to him. If you want to be stronger, you've got to come to him. Don't ever be ashamed of coming to him. That woman with the issue of blood wasn't ashamed to come to him. She wasn't even supposed to be in the crowd. She was considered to be unclean because of her fountain flowing from her body. This woman wasn't worried about what folks think. No, sir. I got to get my healing. I'd have been to all these doctors and ain't nobody stopping my blood. I'm about to, I'm on the verge of dying. I got to get my healing. Yeah. That's got to be your same attitude. Don't be worried about these other folk who laying around in the graveyard. When you realize you're about to die, come get what you need to get. Get your healing from him. When you come to him with your whole heart, he'll heal you from the inside out. And so that's where most of our problems are. Our problems on the inside. Very, very little is wrong with us on the outside. Our problem comes from the inside. Even the Lord said, ain't what comes out of a man that defileth a man. I mean, it's not what goes into a man. It's not what goes into a man. It's not what goes into a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the man. Because what comes out of his mouth comes from his mind. And if his mind is tore up, Know it, life is going to be tore up. And it's reading your life tore up. Your mind tore up. Can I help you? Can't get up here patting you on the back and your life tore up. I want you to leave here better than what you came. Don't come here in sin and leave here in sin. Ain't done you a bit of good. Oh, I showed up, but you ain't do nothing. A wise man is likened unto a man who builds his house on a rock. Why? Because he hears what he needs to hear. And then he does something with what he hears. A foolish man comes into the assembly and hears what he needs to do. And then turns around and walks away. Unchanged. Jesus said he's like a man building his house on sand. You know what's going to happen to a sand house when the storm comes? It's going to fall. You ain't got nothing to hold you up. And many of us in here this morning have fallen. Because we ain't had nothing holding us up. We place ourselves in the devil's sandbox. And we constructed what we thought was a house. Wasn't nothing but a sand figure. And that's the reason why we failed. We were in the wrong place. Building the wrong thing. Come on out here to God's quarry. There's a bunch of rocks down here. It's going to take some time. Don't think it's an overnight success. You ain't going to get here and knock off a few edges and call yourself, I ain't no longer going to be right now. No, baby. Keep knocking. Amen. Keep chipping. Amen. Keep hammering. Keep chiseling. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff that we need to cut away so that God can lay a clean foundation. Then we can build a house that's going to stand the storms of life. Yeah. Not because we did it our way, but because we did it God's way. Yeah. Except the Lord build the house, 
They labor in vain. Y'all in the house and ain't talking to each other? Lord, they feel it out. Y'all in the house and can't stand each other? Lord, them be a little Y'all in that house. And you in the west wing. And she in the east wing. Lord, them be a little house. Y'all in the house. Got a dining room table. And don't let one of y'all sit down and eat it together. Lord, ain't be a little house. I was in the house of the Lord, be the Lord's principles and the Lord's laws are the foundation of that house. That's the reason Joshua could say, as for me and my house, we, not I, I don't know what she gonna do, not me, and I don't know what he gonna do, not me, and I don't know what they gonna do. Joshua said, as for me and my house, if they gonna live at this address, my house gonna serve the Lord. Oh, yes, sir. Ain't nobody gonna live here. Ain't gonna serve the Lord. Everybody in here gonna serve the Lord. Yeah. That's, right. That's where you got to be. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna continue to have the same old problems. You'll be sitting right here this time next year. True. Looking at me like you're looking right now. <laughs> <laughs> Unchanged. Unchanged. Because ain't nothing gonna change until you turn over to the Lord. And the way you turn it over to the Lord is you turn yourself over to the Lord. The Lord says, if any man come after me, let him first deny himself. I got to get me out the way. Get you out the way. So the Lord can work with that thing. Sometimes you your own wall. Sometimes you the wall. You the wall. Yeah, you walk around all wallish. Yeah, they call you the wall. <laughs> You the reason you ain't happy. All right. You the reason you hadn't accomplished anything. You the wall. Yeah. Well, every time I look around, something blocking me. It's how you. Yeah. Look in the mirror. It's you. Right. Everybody else the problem. No, it's you. It's something you got to face. And, and that, I, look, that is a difficult reality to face. But Paul admonished us to examine ourselves. That's right. The Hebrew writer uh, admonished us. To examine ourselves. To see if we're even in the faith. Put yourself to the test. Prove you. See where you are. In relation to your relationship with God. Am I better now in 2012 than I was in 2010? It's still January. Are you still resolving your resolutions? How long did it last this time? Right. Hello? Many of us made them lie illusions. <laughs> I'm going to do better this year than I did last year. <laughs> Lord, if you let me make it to 2012, I'm going to be more faithful and serious. I'm going to give you know, we all them promises. And you know, the thing about God is that He knows our hearts. So it ain't like you can lie to Him nowhere. <laughs> He know when you're crying out for a mercy plea. And because he's so merciful, he'll grant you your plea. It ain't because he thinks you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Because he knows what you ain't going to do. He's just merciful. He just going to give you time to come to your senses and realize, I got to stop fooling myself. You do what you do. Because you want to do it. Ain't nobody's fault but yours. You're where you are. Because you want to be there. Because at any given moment, you can change and make things better. God gives you that option. He gives you the option to change. You're there because you want to be there. You're doing what you're doing because that's what you want to do. If you ever make up in your mind, I want better for myself, then that's when you'll have it. Sometimes you're your own wall. And you need prayer. You need to ask God to help you. To deny yourself so that you can be to him what he would have you to be. If you're here this morning, you realize that you have walls or if you realize that you are the wall, then come forth this morning. We want you to come down the aisle this morning. And don't ever be ashamed to come down and ask for